go. with the 44 updates that Apple pushed out on Wednesday, um, Wednesday or Thursday this week. Terrible impact, terrible impact on the system. It looks like I'll be rebuilding this machine this weekend. But I'm glad you could be here. I'm glad you're here for your morning cup of cyber. Uh, our Illy coffee is wrapped up in a New York City cup as we look through the day. So going to need your patience just a little bit today as we work through this, the, the system. Uh, for live streaming, I use a system called Ecamm. Uh, it's a Mac system. And it's, it's not playing well. It's not playing well with the updates uh, at all. So we'll get through it. We'll get the stuff out. I'm going to have to do a little adjustment as we go along. But uh, let's see if we can just make everything work today. It's one of those things. Um, 
Hey, Michael. Good morning. Good morning. I like that little image. That looks like a... I can't tell. Is that a drone or is that a plane? Uh, let me know. Um, but <laughs> we'll work through it. It is Friday. Uh, you know, I, I, I can't uh, get all the little sound effects working, but I'm happy it's Friday. Happy we made it through the week. Uh, I heard a saying um, just just the other day, uh, every morning is Monday, every Friday. Every evening is a Friday. What a good way to look at the look at the world, I guess. Start every day, work as hard as you can, and then have a, an enjoyable evening. Um, of course, we wear red on Friday, and we do that every week. Um, but crazy, craziness, craziness going on. So if you have Macs, you probably did this massive update this week. Um, 44 new patches came out. So uh, pretty significant amount of patching on the Mac side. Of course, it's happening everywhere. Um, yes, uh, Michael, I'll check out. Had some some issues with the the website. It's got rebuilt. If y'all don't know, there's there is a um, a companion website that's being built for all of the training we're doing here. And Michael's asking, um, you know, can you, the RMF class uh, is is being built at the same time the Security Plus class is being built. Um, the website has been revamped. We had a little problems uh, with our hosting provider getting the mail working just right, but they got that fixed this week. Everything should be back up, and we should have some information going out uh, on that this week, so this week coming up. Um, the two classes moving forward are RMF and Security Plus. Security Plus is obviously, you see a lot of that going on here, um, and it should we'll have more information out next week. Uh, we're actually doing some some pretty big movements today that we'll announce next week. Uh, hopefully they're uh, announced early next week. But sometime next week we have some big, big, big announcements coming out. But that's a, enough enough of that. Let's, let's get everything set up and talk a bit about the news. Let's, let's switch over and talk about the news. So uh, NSA is in the news, but not as we normally see them. Um, you know, there, there's always attacks on mail servers. That is, that's nothing new. Um, we always see this, but there's a Russian uh, intelligence slash hacking group called Sandworm. It's one of the uh, one of the the big groups we see, and it's it's, it's more than likely state sponsored. And a lot of these groups you really can't pin down to being totally one thousand percent state sponsored. But what um, what Sandworm is doing is. It's attacking a, a specific type of mail server known as XM, and it's it's kind of like Exchange or Send Mail, um, but it's got to the point where uh, Thursday, yesterday, NASA, uh, NSA <laughs> uh, issued an advisory that, that the Sandworm Group, part of the GRU Military Intelligence Agency, um, has been actively exploiting a vulnerability known, uh, in this in this mail program. Um, so if, if you're if you're using a system that uses XM, um, if you're in charge of that, if you're running that, if you're you're working with that, do know that uh, it's got to the point where NSA actually issued an advisory, and we don't see this that often. Uh, NSA usually sits in the background and, and does their thing kind of quietly, um, but it's got to a point where they have issued an advisory. So that's that's something you should be aware of uh, in your security repertoire for today. Um, um, always something going on um, for, for folks kind of in this the scamming slash social engineering kind of kind of world. Um, Valorant uh, is a game that's coming out. Um, it's first person shooter. Everybody's excited about it. The uh, beta test, the closed beta test just finished up. Um, and the game is going to be released like June next week, in the first part of June, June 2nd or something like that. Um, May 26th, the, the beta test ended. Um, you know, they found a bunch of vulnerabilities in it, uh, a bunch of um, things that needed to be cleaned up in it, but um, they, they've got it, um, they got it nailed down, they're getting ready to release it. So. While it's it's not in beta anymore and it's not been released, so what the 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 uh, the bad guys are doing is they've created a 
a version of what appears to be the game um, on mobile application store fronts, uh, mainly Google, the Google Store. Um, and really what it does is it installs a splash page for Valorant, um, but then it, when you allow it to be installed, then it starts sending you um, banner ads and things like that so they can gain some, some money from it. So that's what really they're doing with the Valorant. Um, it's, it's not, uh, you know, it's always, uh, always wait and, and wait for the official game. Don't get it through illicit channels. Um, wait for the real, wait for it to come out from the real source. If, they, if there's any question about it, uh, just, just check into it. It's, it's one of those things that, uh, you really, really don't want to do. Um, the other thing we're seeing is social engineering, social engineering on, on WhatsApp as well. Um, when you install WhatsApp on a new application, it sends you a one-time password to validate that you are indeed installing that on something new. Um, there are a group of people that have created an icon. Their, 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 their logo looks like WhatsApp, and they're trying to con people into sending them their one-time password. So, I uh, know it's again. It's a it thing. Valorian, I think, is all uh, Michael's asking about. Is this a, uh, a a game for PC? I think it's all uh, mobile. All, all these games are a lot of them are going uh, mobile now. So uh, I think it's I think it's all mobile. I'm not positive. Let me check into that. Uh, I don't play a lot of games. I don't have time to play a lot of games, unfortunately. Uh, not that I don't want to. Um, just don't have to. <laughs> I don't. I don't have time to. So, um, again, this back to WhatsApp. Um, so they're they're contacting people in the chat session and they're saying, "Hey, we need your one-time password." They're they're posing as uh, technical assistance, uh, and they're getting people to try to reveal their one-time password. And then once they get the one-time password, they can of course uh, install the app on something else and take over. Uh, the account. Um, and last in our news today, there's a New York man that's been charged uh, in a $100 million Bitcoin case. And uh, really, again, uh, we see a lot of these guys coming out of Ukraine. Um, so this is this is a guy, again, coming out uh, of Vin, uh, Vitaly Antenko. i probably saying the name wrong. Um, 28 was arrested and detained for money laundering charges on his arrival in New York from the Ukraine uh, in March. Um, they linked him to Bitcoin wallets in, that were used in transactions totaling $94 million. Um, and really what they were doing is they were, they were trying to find open uh, systems on the internet. And when they found open systems on the internet, systems that could be uh, attacked, they would attack them and they would, they would download credit card information, um, sell that on the black market, and then get Bitcoin for it. So, uh, terribly, uh, uh, terribly dangerous things. Make sure your systems are secure, of course. Um, this guy's been jailed for 20 years and fined up to half a million dollars, $500,000. Definitely a, a big ding on him. Um, the biggest thing, you know, especially the news today, um, our news today really is showing us that, you know, social engineering, again, is, is strong. Um, people are, are coming at you and your users, your endpoints, the people you support, your friends, your family, the folks that come to you for security advice and news, they're all coming to you um, for these crazy questions. And a lot of it's tied up around social engineering. So this morning, uh, you know, the, this, this um, Valorian thing, um, if you go out to the App Store and you know the game's not going to be released until next week and you see it out there, really question what's going on. Why is it out there early? Are you on an early release program for the game? probably would have got it through a different channel than in the store itself. Um, again, big thing, if you're using that uh, uh, the, the mail system that the NSA warned about, watch out for that. Um, train, train your friends, train your family on social engineering. That's the biggest thing right now. Again, we see, again, in the news, I, didn't, I don't report it as much as I did a couple weeks ago. COVID-19 is the biggest... Uh, tool being used to attack people through social engineering. They're coming at folks with 
uh, you know, validation of your stimulus package uh, for COVID-19 or um, tracing the virus. You've been around someone who had COVID-19. Always be leery of these emails and, and text messages, things coming in um, around COVID-19. It's, it's, it's being used by all the bad guys now. So um, today we're going to talk about network intrusion prevention systems and network intrusion detection systems in the slideshow. Um, we do have to cover this. Uh, um, according to some folks, today is Pink Flamingo Day. Uh, I had two choices. I had Composer Day or Pink Flamingo Day. Some sites say Pink Flamingo Day is until next month sometime, end of next month. Uh, I found a couple sites says it's today. I'm going to go with today. Today, we're not going to do Composer Day. It is Pink Flamingo Day. Um, found out recently pink flamingos their wings are black underneath who knew who knew that if you knew that let me know kind of crazy stuff so um if you hang out and i hope you do after the cup of cyber this morning we're going to jump in and we're talk about more information on security plus um, network intrusion detection systems uh, network intrusion prevention systems what's the difference what are they all about how do they work how's inline versus uh, out of bound how does all that stuff work and why do we use them at all i hope you hang out uh, as always please hit the bell after you like and subscribe uh, share with your friends actually we're, we're knocking on a thousand subscribers so we're two away we need two people to be a thousand um, it's always a big milestone to get to 1k uh, appreciate you share with your friends we will um continue putting out content. We're gonna push out content, push out content. Um, the other stream that Michael was talking about earlier, RMF has gotta get a kickback up. We've been, we've been spending a ton of time on Security Plus because this first two domains of Security Plus are just so heavy. So much stuff in the first two dom domains. And they cover almost 50% of the exam. So anyways, hang out. Uh, love to hear your comments. Michael, thanks for saying so much this morning. I appreciate it. It's good to, good to see you guys out there. It's, Hard to get up early in the morning sometimes, so I do appreciate you being there. So let's do a little brief uh, intro, and then we'll jump into uh, the slide deck for today. All right, let's see. Can we get everything lined up? That's not too bad, actually. I'm a little bit off center. So we'll get myself centered. Uh, scoot on over here. Um, and then we will make sure we're all good to go on our slide. And there we go. Okay, I think we're I think we're good to go. So let's uh, let's get this let's get this show started. I'm Jim with Cyber Recon. Welcome to another version of getting you ready for the Security Plus certification exam and bettering yourself in your cybersecurity career. Today we're going to talk about network intrusion detection systems and network intrusion prevention systems. Um, this is part of domain one in the Security Plus certification exam. Um, this is in subdomain 1.2 and let's, uh, let's talk about it a little bit. Let's talk about what we're going to talk about. What's an NIPS? What's an NIDS? Uh, what's signature based and what is heuristics or behavioral based? There's a little bit, little bit of difference between the two of those. Um, what do we know about inline versus passive? Uh, what is in band versus out of band? What do we know about rules? And then what about analytics, false positives and false negatives? Um, let's talk about each of those a little bit. So according to NIST, um, and this is a little bit of a modified definition because they don't have an exact definition of network intrusion prevention systems. Uh, but it's software that performs packet sniffing and network traffic analysis to identify and prevent suspicious activity and rec record relevant information. Um, thing about NIPS, and the big thing is that you know, obviously the difference is the P and the D. The prevention system um, is, is active. Um, and we'll talk, well, next slide, obviously, we go in the detection system. But the prevention system will actually actively make changes to your network to prevent the attack. So an NIPS monitors network traffic for anomalies. It detects and prevents specific attacks according to defined rules. And it can modify other security devices. 
And obviously, we'll get NIDSs, and it does not prevent, um, it should not say that, it does not prevent specific attacks. So, NIDS is software that performs packet sniffing and network traffic analysis to identify suspicious activity and record relevant information. It monitors network traffic for anomalies. It detects, suspe it detects specific attacks according to defined rules. It doesn't prevent them. That's a mistake on the slide. Um, it does not prevent specific attacks. It just detects them. That's the biggest thing between an NIDS and an NIPS, or NIDS and a DIPS. Uh, the, with, with prevention, it actually modifies other security devices like firewalls and uh, routers and things like that to block attacks that it knows about. Um, and NIDS or NIDS cannot modify other security devices. That's how it, it's just monitoring. It's monitoring and it's reporting. So it'll send log reports, it'll send alerts, it'll do things like that. And NIPS will also send alerts and it'll also send um, log events, but it doesn't prevent the attack. That's the biggest thing. Um, both NIDS and NIPS can be signature based. This is like your antivirus. It's based on signatures or patterns. Um, the system must have a signature of something it knows as bad to be able to react to it. It's got to know what bad looks like and it does that through a signature file. So someone defines in a file what uh, an attack looks like. So if we say something like the Sasser worm looks a specific way, we can define that and if a, a NIDS, an, an IPS system, either one, sees it on the network, it can react either by detecting or preventing it. Um, these are obviously faster to implement and they have low false positive rates. They're faster to implement because once you define the, the security rules in there, once you define those signatures, then the system is ready to go. Um, behavioral based, on the other hand, um, has to detect things that are not normal and to do that it's first got to learn what normal is. So for that reason it takes longer to implement. So it has to monitor your network and it has to learn what your normal network traffic looks like. Once it learns what's normal then it can find things that are not normal and those anomalies are what it reports on. Um, doesn't rely on signatures so it can be faster in detecting new threats. So in signature based, uh, somebody has to write the signature, it has to be pushed out to all the IDS systems, um, and then it can react, it can report back in, or it can be preventive. Um, with a behavioral based system, it knows what normal looks like, so when a new, new vulnerability comes out, um, then it, the system will know that that's not normal, that thing is not normal. Um, Obviously, if you change the way you're doing things, if you change maybe your hours or you move people remote, that could throw a lot of false positives for a behavioral-based system. So there, we have to worry about that. Heuristic based are a bit in between signature-based and behavioral-based. They use artificial intelligence or AI to detect threats. They use the logarithms to define if signature is bad, and they just kind of live in this space between uh, the signature-based and a behavioral base. They're kind of the best of both worlds. Um, the anom anomalies we're talking about, um, this is something that is not normal or out of uh, the normal activity you do. Um, they're similar, these systems are similar to behavioral in the way that the, the anomaly based systems must learn what is normal and then those anomalies are different the differences from what is normal. Um, some anomalies can be defined and implemented faster um, because it's not only learning from the system but we're telling it things as well. We're telling it that these specific systems maybe are Windows based and if we see an Apple attack against those systems we know something is weird. Somebody is trying to run Apple commands on a Windows system or Windows commands on an Apple device or a Linux device, we know that's not right and that's kind of anomaly. That's uh, anomalous traffic and we can report on that or we can prevent that. We can act on that activity. Um, next, we talk, next we talk about how these devices are implemented. Um, we can implement them inline or we can imp them, implement them in a passive way. Uh, in inline, traffic passes through the IDS or the IPS. Um, and in that way it, it can act on it quicker um, 
and normally we see IPSs, well, we see both implemented this way uh, because traffic is going through the device. Um, passive device really sits off the network traffic and just observes it. And we see this a lot more with IDSs, but we can see it either way. So if we see this normal, normal communication chain between the firewall and, say, a computer, um, in an inline IPS or IDS, the device sits right there on the in between the traffic. It's going to see everything going through. Um, it's going to be able to react because it sits on the traffic path itself. Um, in a passive implementation of an IDS or IPS, the device is not in line, but it's connected like to, to a tap or something like that, and it monitors the traffic going by. So it doesn't actually sit in line. It's connected to the, 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 the network channel and it monitors the network channel. So the other thing we see is how do we communicate between the controller and the IDSs or IPSs? We can have in-band communications or out-of-band communications. So in-band communicates with the controller on the same network as the communication flow. So there, there's kind of one network cable that's going through the device um, and to the other uh, connected devices, uh, we're using the same one communication path that we're using for our normal communications to communicate with the controller for the IDS and IPSs. Out of band uses a totally separate network to, mu to communicate. So when we want to communicate with the IDS or the IDS wants to communicate back with the controller, in band is going to use that same network that's used for network traffic to communicate, and out of band it's going to use a, a communication path that's a separate, totally separate network. Um, so that does help define that a bit. And then rules. The rules are what make up the, the actions that the IDS or the IPS is going to take. Uh, rules help determine if an event has occurred um, rules depends on the type of, of sensor we're using, behavioral, heuristic, si uh, signature-based, or alarm anomaly. Um, and rules define what the, the sensor will detect, and in some cases, like prevention systems, what the sensor will react to. So we define the rules. We say if specific actions look like this, if you see this type of activity going across the network, then you'll know that's this type of attack. So if we see, um, you know, the evidence of, say, a denial of service attack, then we can know, if we know if these specific things happen and the IDS or IPS sees that, then we'll know that that a type of attack is going on. So we have to define rules, and they can be very complex. And a lot of times, uh, larger organizations will subscribe to services that provide those rules, um, but you can write them yourself. You can tailor them specific to your organization. Um, I think about analytics. Once we get all of this data that's coming from the IDS and the IPS, uh, we have to think about what what we're going to do with it. Obviously, we're going to log it. Maybe we're going to send it to a SIEM or security event, an incident management system. Um, obviously, all this information comes in, uh, even if it's not being acted on immediately by a, like an IPS or an IDS. Um, it can assist in the detection of advanced persistent th threats, um, zero days, or indicators of compromise. So we can compile this stuff, we can use it for analytics, we can define things at a later time. Um, we can use that analytics for near real-time reaction, uh, both in IDS, when people have to react to it, or IPS, when the system itself is reacting to the attack. Um, but we're, when we look at all of this information, we have to see, is there false negatives in, in the information? Right, so this is uh, a finding that is shown to be a violation of the rule, but is not. Um, and this actually, this is a, we've got our definitions. This slide deck is all messed up. So this is a false positive, and I'm going to actually. Stop this! Just bear with me, guys. I told you, I told you we we're going to have that kind of morning. Um, I'm going to fix this before we go on. He's got defined incorrectly, and I hate to put out bad information to you guys. 
There we go. Let's jump back into this thing now. So false positive. Um, some things you got to watch out. Sometimes, you know, slide decks get put together uh, quickly, and uh, when they get reviewed, it's just uh, something like this gets missed. we got to watch out for that. So, again, false positive is a finding that's shown to be a violation of a rule, but it's not, right? So it's showing up as a, a, a finding on the report. The IDS or IPS found a violation, but it really is not. So a computer, here's an example, a computer that alerts that it has a specific virus, but it doesn't really have the virus. That's a false positive. We think something is happening, or we think there's an attack on the network, but it's not. It's just specific things happen. It, it maybe is just somebody's doing something that they haven't done before, maybe a heuristics or a behavioral-based system. Um, it's not really an attack. It's just something different has happened. Um, the alarms went off, but when we investigated, it really was an attack, was not an attack. Um, so it came up, it was, it was shown as a false positive. We don't, um, we, we don't want these to happen a lot, but they're, they're going to. Uh, but worse than a false positive, a false negative. And that's when a violation, that hap violation happens, but it's not detected. So in this example, a computer does not alert that it has a virus, but it does. This is when your IDS or IPS um, does not alert on an attack, but there's an attack going on. Um, there's a lot of reasons why these happen. False positives are bad. False negatives are worse. False positives, something, something was, was an alarm was sent off, but it really, it, it, it wasn't an attack. So we can fix that. The false negative is an attack happened and our system didn't detect it. So that's obviously in the security world, that's worse. It's something's happening and you don't know about it. So that's the rundown, what you need to know about IDSs and IPSs. You should know this for your general security knowledge. Um, and if you're going to sit for the Security Plus certification exam, you need to know it for that. So um, as always, I'm Jim with Cyber Recon. Love you to subscribe, comment, hit the bell to be notified. And uh, for those folks that were here for Cup of Cyber, um, thanks for hanging with us. Sorry about that. Apologize for those couple of mistakes. Hopefully, they're not going to derail you. Do know, do know for a fact, the difference between fault positive and false negatives. Um, it's not just used for IDS and IPS. It's used for antivirus systems. It's used for vulnerability scanning systems. It's used even when people do red red teaming and pen testing. It's it's important to know that term. It's going to carry through. So uh, hopefully, that is is good for y'all. So as always, I'm Jim with Cyber Recon. Uh, be safe out there, and we'll see you next time.